please welcome to the stage Tyler Fisher! Keep that energy going, everybody. Let's clap along with me. Clap along. Come on now, with me. Come on. What? Clap along. Oh yeah. Thanks for coming out tonight, everybody. Appreciate it. All right, all right. After me, everybody. Have some fun. Have some fun. Secret love. Secret love. NYC. NYC. Build the wall. Build the wall. Build, the wall. build it. Freaking build it. You better build the wall. Just trying to see what kind of people are at this show. Oh, man. Let's take a good look at you. Let's see who's here. Oh, look at this. Look at this diverse crowd. It's like a tech startup in here, isn't it? This crowd is so young, diverse, colorful. Everybody in this crowd has what I like to call resting NPR face. Just, that was a good joke. Yeah, we're a little triggering for me, honey, but we're gonna fact check it after the farmer's market. And... But no, I do appreciate you coming out. You didn't have to leave your house, Stephen. You know there's comedy on Netflix. Like, but you could be in bed. Like, top, top quality comedy for free. How does that company pull in a profit? I have never met one person that actually pays for their account. How are they making money? Do you know how weird it would be if any other business operated like Netflix? You go out to like a five-star restaurant, you go to pay your bill, they're like, no, sir, it's all taken care of. We put that on somebody else's account. <laughs> what? Who, who paid for my meal? Let's see here. Your ex-girlfriend's parents, yeah. <laughs> they have been buying your meals since uh, 2007. So go ahead and tell your friends. You could throw them right on there. Did you hear that siren? This next joke is illegal, so I just want to be careful. <laughs> I'm a tiny guy. Don't laugh at that. What's the setup? Are any tiny people in here? Yeah, those shrill little voices. We're like dolphins. Our voices are like dog whistles. We can only hear each other. <laughs> It's hard being tiny, man. Small lives matter. Everything you stand next to, you make look enormous. This is just size 12 font right here. Just get this toothpick out of the way here. Standard size note cards. I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I can't. This is a button off a man's pant I just found on the ground. <laughs> Whose button is this? It's not my button. Cause I'm wearing kids pants. And it's Velcro, baby. I still get picked up, man. People still pick me up as an adult. Scoop me up. Hey, little buddy. I get scooped several times a day without consent. I'm getting scooped up, thrown over their shoulder. People ask me, this is the most common question I get is, are your parents tiny? Hey buddy, are your parents tiny? Is that how this happened? What do you, look at me. No, they're eight feet tall. My dad just came a little bit. How do you, how do you think this happened? Just a little bit, we're just gonna make a little baby. Just a little, we'll pull out, pull out, pull out. Careful now, careful. We, we can't afford a child this size, not in this economy, we can't do it. He just took a little drop, took a little eye droplet of cum and Four weeks later, uh, I was born. That's how long it takes to bake a body like this. Four weeks. I'm eight months premature. There's my tiny parents right there. Legs are so short, they're fucking late. It takes us twice as long to get here. Nobody's talking about that. I'm gonna be 33 in two months. From the back, I will always look like a 12-year-old boy. I am a pedophile's worst nightmare. 
I shouldn't be doing stand-up. I should be working on the field for the NYPD, catching pedophiles on the jungle gyms. My body's a perfect booby trap, you know? All I gotta do is just hang out at the playground, you know? Just... <laughs> just wait for some creep, you know? Like... Hey, little boy, you wanna come with me in my van? Oh, I, don't, I don't know, mister, I don't know. I don't think that's a good, a good idea. Cause my mommy and daddy told me not to go, to, to, to go with strangers. To not to go with strangers. But I thought, mister, maybe instead you wanna uh, uh, come with me. Downtown. Man boy unit, get down here. God, man, what kind of candy are you working with? So we, we, we need backup. We got sour Skittles. This guy knows what he's doing. If you did not laugh at that joke, you are a pedophile. Got him. We've been following this guy for weeks. Monkey bar to monkey bar. By the way, do you guys like impressions? All right, here we go. I'll d I got here we go. I got one for you. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. That's my impression of you guys when I asked if you like impressions. <laughs> Been working on that one for a little while. Uh, by the way, I just uh, I want to just let you guys know uh, I do the best Donald Trump hand impression in the country. Look at these little guys. Look at these little pussy grabbers. I'll get you. Okay, I'll take you to China. Okay, I'll grab your little Chinese balls. Okay. Why does it always look like he's jerking off the longest, skinniest penis? What is that? Okay, China. Okay, we're going, going to China. We're gonna build the wall in China. It's China. It's China. It's China. It's China. It's chickeny China, okay? The Chinese chicken, it's all China. That's all I ever talk about is China. That's it, China, it's China. We think it's a, a crazy time. We think uh, Trump is the, is the first crazy in office. Dare we forget a man named George W. Bush? Guy was insane. Couldn't speak English. <laughs> Eight years of that guy. And uh, we've been reminded of George Bush by um, this recent encounter with Ellen DeGeneres and George W. Bush hanging out. And people got upset because Ellen DeGeneres is a gay woman. George W. Bush did not support gay marriage. So people got up in arms. And here's the thing. I, don't think, I think George Bush is a good guy. I really do. I think he meant well. I think he cares about gay people. I think the issue is he just isn't able to pronounce the acronym. Imagine him giving a statement to the American people. Um, my fellow Americans, uh, you miss me, don't you? Um, I just want to say, um, uh, in light of the recent controversy, I do, I do support all peoples, whether you be uh, trans, uh, translucent. Or a, a panda sexual. <laughs> or a biodegradable questioning queen. <laughs> I support everybody within the L L B D D D uh, L L uh, the L M F A O the, um, the H G T V. I'm down with O P P. <laughs> I like the P B and J's and the B L T's. They're delicious people. We got that. We, did we get that? Okay. Mission accomplished. <laughs> People will come up to me on the street in New York and they'll tell me what celebrity they think I look like. I guess I have a familiar face. It can be flattering, but they'll do this thing where they'll then glob on like a second, tinier, creepier celebrity. <laughs> Make this like hybrid, made up thing. So, excuse me, pardon me, so, so sorry. Has anyone ever told you you look like the Aaron Paul fella? From Breaking, Breaking Bad? 
if he had sex with Macaulay Culkin when he was 12, <laughs> but when he was doing a lot of that heroin. Do you ever get that? I'm so sorry if you get that a lot. I'm so sorry. But... Do you ever get Ryan Gosling and a baby goat? <laughs> Getting a real Ryan Goatling vibe. Maybe David Spade was there, and Ellen donated some eggs, and Niles Crane from Frasier, perhaps? You ever get that combo? I'm sorry if you get that. I'm really sorry if you get that. I watched The Notebook for the first time in my life. The Notebook with Ryan Gosling. And uh, I gotta say, I don't think Ryan Gosling's a good actor. Yeah, gasps. From the women only in the room. He's attractive, Ryan Gosling's attractive. He's got one acting face, he's got one acting move. No matter what happens in a scene, it just looks like he's smelling a pile of diarrhea, that's it. No matter what he finds out, it could be good, it could be bad, it's just. I love jazz. What's that smell? It smells like jazz. I met my, uh, my favorite celebrity, my hero, on the street a few weeks ago. I ran into and met Owen Wilson. And the guy was so nice, he gave me his autograph, he didn't want to do it. He's just always happy. I feel like the most horrific thing could happen to Owen Wilson. He still sounds like he's your best friend in the world. That guy could walk into his house. Just be like, Whew. wow. <laughs> Come on, you murdered my whole family. <laughs> Even the cat, that was a brand new cat. <laughs> that cat was like two days old. You gotta be kidding me. You are crazier than a road lizard. I'm still your pal. I'm still your amigo. I'm gonna clean this up. <laughs> I'll do uh, I'll do a couple short ones for you. This is uh, this is my impression of uh, Al Pacino. This is Al Pacino if he was an owl. <laughs> I'm a freaking owl. <laughs> yeah, I'm an owl. <laughs> I'll do, uh, this is uh, Matthew McConaughey. Matthew McConaughey, if he was a vicious dog. I'll bite, I'll bite, I'll bite. <laughs> All right, I'll do, uh, these are going well, these animal ones. I'll, <laughs> I'll do, uh, this is a crowd favorite, Bill Cosby. Um, <laughs> If he was a turtle. Yeah. The Bill Cosby and I raped about 40 women, but I'm a turtle. <laughs> That's the rest of that. That's it. Anyone live in New York City? Who lives in New York City? A round of applause. This is the biggest misinformation campaign in the country. New York City, the city that never sleeps. I saw like 40 people sleeping on the sidewalk just on my way here. The subway is basically a community nap time for adults. We're isolated in New York. We're around millions of people. We're so alone, we're all in our little bubbles. This is how you know how isolated you are. You can't even walk down the street next to a stranger at the same speed as them for more than four paces. You'll have a complete social mental breakdown. <laughs> That's how much you don't want people in your space. You see someone just pop up at the what, same speed, you're like, what the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> Can't you see, this is my pace? Get your own. I got a pace patent, it's called Lake Casual. Come on, try the tardy truck, get out of here. I'm so jaded, I, I moved here 12 years ago, I'm tipping everybody, just giving, 
construction workers money. Everybody gets money. The guy playing the shoot, the string, whatever, y'all get money. I won't even entertain directions now. Someone will be like, excuse me, sir, I'm trying to get to Times Square. I'm like, Times Square's closed. <laughs> Just trying to get to a Starbucks to take a shit. <laughs> if I could only find the code. If I could only find the code. How is this the greatest city in the world? If the most effective way to know if your subway is arriving is from feeling wind. <laughs> How are both of those things true? Tell me right now. 2020. You're there for four hours. You gotta like put your body out into the platform. <laughs> I think I feel the J coming. <laughs> Harry, this could be the last one for weeks. <laughs> My favorite thing is when I'm on the train and you see somebody sprinting down the platform and they jump on and they just squeeze through the door and they just make it on that train. They act like that was the last train for 35 years. <laughs> you cannot help but let out a celebration so grand that the entire car notices. And then you get to watch that person transition back into the mood of the rest of the train when they realize joy is not welcome in New York City. They get on, oh, God. oh so close, thank you. Oh, oh you're good, oh, you're good. Oh, I'm close, woo! Oh. 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 What the hell are you looking at? What time is it, showtime? I don't know who runs the, the MTA. I don't know who run, runs the New York City subway. For all I know, it's just a bunch of like rats pulling levers. Like that's what I just... Sixth train, five, fourth train, don't delay, delay. That's it, I don't know who, how, how could there be a human behind the operation? And they're faceless. They called for an emergency boardroom MTA meeting recently. I, w I wanna be in that boardroom meeting to see what kind of decisions are being made. She's like, Everybody, uh, give it up for the uh, president of the MTA. Next slide. <laughs> Brutal, it's like a Japanese game show. You swipe your card, you're like, am I gonna see a dick? Am I gonna see my ex-girlfriend? I don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know if your train will even get to where you're going. Is that what happened? Like 7.30 in the morning, they're like Surprise, last stop, everybody off the train. What? I'm supposed to be at work right now. Ah, uh, where are we? Horse Skirmahorn? I don't even know what borough I'm in. And then they send you on this new crazy journey you have to figure out. Like, it's no big deal. Okay, everybody, the Q train is not working. Your Q train is not working. Everybody, you're going to walk 34 blocks to the F, which is now running on the R line. The R is now running vertically, so you're going to get off at the top of Grand Central Station. Okay, you're going to climb down. You're going to get on a horse and buggy, not included in the fare. You're going to take that across town to Shake Shack, where you're going to eat all your feelings. Stay clear to close the doors. Close the doors. Oh, yeah. There's no jokes on here, it just says don't give up. That's uh... <laughs> it says you decided to drop out of law school. So just a little, little reminder. I love this job. I love stand-up comedy. I got to open for two of my heroes recently. I got to do a benefit show opening for Bill Burr and Sebastian Maniscalco. Like, these are, these are my idols. I got to open for them. I got to hang out with them in the green room after. And their act just, like, continues. Both of them, that's just how they are all the time. I'm, I'm sitting in the corner of the green room just watching them, just like... You know what really bothers me, Bill? Like, bothers me? 
is when my wife takes my car <laughs> without even asking me. Dude, you know what? My wife does the same crap, right? Yeah, she does, right? First of all, I just bought her like a brand new car, right? She's like, oh, Bill, I just like to take your car because it handles the rug better and the interior. Yeah, 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 yeah. nah, it's brutal. I'm walking across the room and I say, she takes my car. I, and you can't hit him. You can't hit him, right? Yeah, I see her eating a piece of pie. Sometimes I want to take her head and just shove it right in the pie. But you can't do it. It's freaking brutal. <laughs> All right, the only part about that joke that isn't true is um, I never did uh, open for those guys. So I just, you can imagine that's what it's like, though, you know? Anyone on a date tonight? Wow. Amber alert. <laughs> Miss, blink twice if you're safe. Anybody in here on Tinder? Liars! I will lock that door. I will set my radius to 32 feet. I will find, swipe, match, and fuck all of you one at a time. Starting with this guy right here. We already matched. Prefer five, two, and under. I had to quit Tinder, man. It's addicting. Dating apps are ruining romance. They're ruining romance. It's all I know. I've been on Tinder for seven years. It's all I know. That's how I know how to match with a woman. That's it. My phone died the other day in Central Park. I was like, oh, I want to meet, just meet a woman in real life. You know, in the wild. All I could think to do, all my brain knew what to do. I was just going up, just swiping my hand across the women's faces. I'm like, I like you. This is all I know. Just clicking on foreheads. Like, Can I gotta see you in another image? Is there Wi-Fi? Is there Wi-Fi? I've gotta see you in 45 other pictures before I decide. I must see you on top of a mountain doing yoga. Before I decide if we're gonna have meaningless sex. Let's get personal. You guys wanna hear a, a really embarrassing first time sex story? I said, do you guys want to hear a first time sex story? Yeah. All right. You can go first. <laughs> Not so easy, is it? <laughs> Give me that. All right, that's that whole bit. I was on a date um, two days ago. It was two years ago, but let's just make it, top make it topical. I walk this girl to her house. She looks at me and she goes, Tyler, when I'm hanging out with you, I just feel like I'm hanging out with Woody Allen in one of his films. I was like, that's not good. I didn't even know what to say to that. I was just like, I mean, how can you say that? I mean, we just met. And you give me a real existential crisis. You, you really are. Can I, do you mind if I b borrow these for one second? You know what I mean? You, you're not, you're not even Asian. I, I, I'm, I'm trying something different. You're not even in my family. I'm going outside the box here. <laughs> Great. Four people have seen a Woody Allen film. What, well, what a waste of a joke. You know. <laughs> I don't even have an ending for this. You know, there's, there's no punchlines in life. We just die and that's it. So I'm gonna leave it there and just let you suffer through the, through the silence. You are blind as a bat. Jeez. You can't even see your boyfriend. I mean, this man. Single, but I'm not lonely. I just got a companion in the form of a 15 month old Labradoodle mini. And of course, everybody wants to know, the first question is, is he a rescue? Did you rescue him? It's like, look at me, come on. Look at me. I'm not, a, I'm not a monster, of course. In fact, I flew all the way to Mississippi and I rescued that dog from the breeder. <laughs> Nobody does that with kids. You see an Asian kid, did you rescue him? <laughs> oh, great. There's plenty of kids that need to be rescued. 
He's actually he's a certified service dog. I know people always want to know, like, what's your, you know, what's, what's the service? What does he do for you? And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell a crowd right now for the first time. My dog, Freddy, um, <clears throat> when I leave the house, it's kind of hard to talk about. Uh, he assists me in getting um, tons of pussy. Uh, <laughs> that I otherwise wouldn't be able to get without his service, so. <laughs> Does anyone have a dog in here? Woo! What kind of dog do you have? A rusty. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a note to edit that out. <laughs> Minute 34, <laughs> condescending heckle. <laughs> no, it was, a, it was consensual, that was consensual. <laughs> You got a rescue. What's the breed? Uh, Poodle Schnauzer. Ah, oh, beautiful breed. I don't know. <laughs> Pe people love people love coming up and guessing the breed. Do they ever do that to you? Yeah. They love and they they're just like they want to be right. So I just tell them they're right. They'll come up with these wild mixes. They're going, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Is that a bulldog? Is that a Mexican bulldog? Mixed with a German Nazi hunter? It is! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> is that a Caucasian shithead? Mixed with a Portuguese uh, slippery dog? Yeah, I knew it! I knew it! I told you, babe. I told you. You could tell by the tail, the tail swoops. You could tell. People come up to me all the time, all the time. And I'm a bit of an introvert off stage. I, I really, I can't handle talking to people in, in public. They want to come up and ask these mundane questions. And here's the issue. This is the social rule. If you have a dog and somebody else has a dog, they are allowed to walk and talk with you for as long as they goddamn wish. And there's nothing you could do about it. There's nothing else you can have in your possession where somebody would feel that they were allowed to do that. You can't be walking down the street with like an ice cream cone. Someone's like, hey, hey, I also have an ice cream cone. I have a few Monday questions for you. Let's walk and talk. What kind is it? A chocolate cup, babe, I told you it's a chocolate cup. I told you, ours is a mix, it's a mix. A little bit of both. We don't really know actually what the third thing is, but where'd you get it? Dairy Queen? Yeah, uh, we got ours at Ample Hill Creamery. Funny story, somebody ordered it and then they had to leave, so technically, it is a rescue. <laughs> Let's go to the park now. But I feel like if you have a dog, you kind of like, you give, it, you give it its own voice, right? Because you're with it so much, it doesn't speak. I feel like his voice would be Robin Williams. He's got that energy. He's just always so excited and he's got like ADD. I could leave for like 10 minutes. I come back. He's like, oh, oh my God, I thought you left me. Oh, you love me so much, don't you? Oh, God. Oh, how long have you been gone? 10 minutes? Three hours? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let me lick your feet. Oh, please let me lick your feet. Oh, you are my master. You really are. What is that? Is that my favorite ball? Oh, it's my favorite ball. Oh, it squeaks in the middle. Ah, oh, hoo yeah, my favorite ball. Yeah. Oh, you love me, don't you love me? Tell me how much you love me. Woo! Is it time for dinner? Oh, it's time for dinner. Oh, what's for dinner? Don't tell me it's kibble. It's kibble, holy shit, it's kibble. The same thing we've had for the last 343 days. Oh, I love you so much. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, Mrs. Dogfire, dear. All right. I just came, uh, came back from Ireland. I did a show in Ireland. <laughs> And uh, amazing. Yeah, you're all drunk already. See, uh, yeah. that's what it's like all the time there. Yeah. I love Ireland. I love the Irish accent. It's a beautiful accent. The thing is, the mix of the alcohol and that thick accent, sometimes it's just gibberish. You can't understand anything they say at all. But occasionally there'll be like one perfectly pronounced word out of nowhere. <laughs> but, Oh, so the other day, I sing down to the pub, I should tell you, you know, Freud, you know, you know, we get a little bit liquor, don't we? are just two pints, Berkey, but he's like, oh, not with tea, he's like, no, not particularly. <laughs> that would have said a 45 and a 10 points, so, anyways, I did 10 years for murder, so cheers. 
right to the point on me there. Okay. <laughs> My ex-girlfriend um, was a foreigner. She, uh, she was from England. Beautiful woman. She was actually a newscaster for the BBC. You guys listen to the BBC? Beautiful newscaster voice. The only problem was like, when we'd hang out after work, she couldn't really drop the newscaster, like breaking news voice, <laughs> which was infuriating. I'd go to her house, be like, hey babe, what do you wanna do today? You wanna, you wanna like go to a museum or something? Or I thought today we'd head down to the farmer's market. <laughs> We'll purchase 15 Macintosh apples, place them in a burlap sack, take them home and turn them into a pie. <laughs> Why are you swiveling? There's no cameras. You're not, you're home now. You're home and it's too cold for the farmer's market. It's actually 22 degrees Celsius. Expect a light drizzle moving in late afternoon. You might want to bring your glove. You know, it's Fahrenheit, okay? I'm on a calculator all day trying to do conversions. That's enough out of you. More on this later. <laughs> Join me tomorrow morning when you wake up. On the couch. <laughs> Preheat the oven. I don't understand why uh, some foreign people have a thick foreign accent, yet they go to sing a song in English. The accent virtually disappears. Where does it go? I have a, a, a roommate from France the other day. He's like, Tyler, what is the song here? Yeah, uh, uh, there's a train, there's a, there's a famous uh, song. Yeah, it's like a country song. So I was like, I, Philip, I don't know. Do you know how the song goes? It is a very difficult song for me to sing. Yeah. It goes yeah, something like, uh, uh, I hear the train coming, it's rolling around the bend. And I ain't seen the sunshine since the whole bit is gone, the whole bit is here. The sunshine since the whole bit is here. The whole bit is here. The whole bit is here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Johnny Cash. I was like, yeah. From now on, you sing in this house. You want something, you sing a song about it. We're out of soap. I need some soap. I haven't paid some rent. You just sing a song. That's a rule now. I don't see the issue with uh, people being deported. If you want to cross the border, just cross singing a little melody. They're not gonna know you're not American. Excuse me, excuse me. You an American citizen? Hello? It's me. American vacationing to Mexico City. Hello from the other side. I tried to cross a thousand times. Thank you. Thank you so much. We talk differently now than we did. Way differently. You watch a film from like the 1920s, the 1930s. What the hell kind of voice did we have not but 70 years ago? You couldn't understand anything these people said. They spoke in these like bizarre rhythms and rhymes. Like, well, you like women, do you, Johnny? I'll give you some advice about women. <clears throat> well, what comes up might never come down. If she contradicts, I don't know. She'll be upstairs in the other basement. Da -da 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 -da. Here she comes. She's coming around the corner. If she's not going once, she'll be going twice. She'll be sold. And that's just the way it goes. You say, 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 you say. Always asking, you see, because nobody saw it. Nobody knew what the hell anybody was talking about. <laughs> they had like no range of emotion. It was the same like reaction for everything. <sighs> oh, well, I'm awfully sad. I'm awfully mad. I'm awfully glad. <laughs> well, I heard Mary got a job. That's wonderful. Well, I heard Sally got murdered. That's terrible. <laughs> I'll drink to that, sure. <laughs> I just started doing uh, yoga. Hey! Woo! Woo! If you don't know what yoga is, it's the highly respected ancient practice of holding your farts in for an hour <laughs> in public. That's the workout. It's fear of public humiliation. You're in the room with like 50 supermodels in tights. You're just in the corner holding in your Chipotle farts. 
And you think like, ooh, I could sneak a little squeak out in the back. Nobody will know. Wrong! This is a hollow room made of bamboo. It's like farting into a giant guitar. It just rits trapped for a whole hour. The have you breathe into places breath does not even travel. She's like, just make sure you're breathing to the tips of your elbows. Just fill them up with breath. Just, just throw a little breath into that pancreas. You'll feel it expand. Breathe into your left nipple. There you go. That's, that's where you hold all the tension. That's where you hold all the tension. There's all these props you have to gather. There's always one prop I have no idea what to do with. She's like, everybody gra grab two blocks, a blanket, and a live tortoise, and just put those aside. <laughs> grab a stretchy cord, a pad, and a blowtorch, and just put those at the top of your mat. You'll know when to take it out. You'll know. And every pose sounds exactly the same. Exactly. Like, everybody go into Flavasana, then Chin Chun Trasana, then Lipa Frana Koran Tasana, Pinky Turn Tasana, Try Not to Fart Fasana, Why Not Come Rasana, then Rana Koran, Flipa Gana Shran, Chin Pan, Chipitan Tom Pan Tom, Shipa Shap, Ship Tom Tom Tom, Flippy Tom, Shukabadan, Sharaman, Hamadan, Aramadan. Dasana. You got that? Everybody got that? You got that? And all these poses just translate into basic farm animals. And they don't tell you what the animals do. They just tell you what animal to get into. I have no idea what any of these animals do. The other day she's like, everybody get into pigeon pose? Just get into, at your own pace, get into pigeon. I was like, I didn't know what to do, so I just took a crap on my neighbor's mat. <laughs> stole a snack bar and just jumped out the window. I think I just did yoga. I think I beat yoga. <laughs> Here's the thing about yoga. You never know when the pose is over because they'll always offer up to make it a little more difficult, a little more challenging, if you'd like, only if you're comfortable, yeah. until you want to take your own life. <laughs> just, everyone just grab your right leg. You're going to bend it back. Just hold it there for eight breaths. Just hang out there. If you're comfortable here, you can stay here. <laughs> if you want to push it a little, flip your leg over your shoulder, just dangle that right leg there. Just wet noodle that there. If you want to take a block and dislocate your hip, you can just flip it over. Give your head a little massage with your toes because you deserve it. And at your own pace, find yourself in a handstand because that's easy. You're going to hold there for 900 breaths. If you want to hang out, hang out. If you want to feel it, take your partner with your legs, flip them on top of your head for a headstand on top of a handstand. All right? If you want to hang, hang. If you want to make it worth your while, walk your partner across the room. Go down the stairs. You're going to get on the A train. Go cross town to JFK. We have a small propeller plane waiting to take you to the base of Mount Vesuvius. You're going to climb to the summit just using your pinkies, okay? Once you've gotten to the summit, here's where you're going to take out. You're two blocks in a blanket. I told you you need it because you're going to build shelter and live there for the next 12 years, building villages for the locals. You're going to end racism. You're going to cure AIDS. You're going to get Trump out of office. And then you can meet us back here for Savasana. <laughs> Namaste. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my debut comedy special. I really hope you enjoyed it. This was a self-produced, self-funded special, so if you'd like to help me out, up here is my Venmo, it's at Comedy Show. Literally, whatever you can give, I'd be so appreciative. Or, I have a Patreon page, which is an exclusive members-only page. You get a free live streaming stand-up show once a month. I'm gonna have special guests, all sorts of bonus stuff, so check it out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you know when I have new videos coming out. Once again, I can't thank you enough. I appreciate it and I hope to see you soon.